Well, I think um, it's important to remember that theology begins with as a reflection on revelation. But revelation itself is given to us in human terms and in terms of language that um, expresses knowledge of the world. And so, in a sense, revelation, which is the starting point for theology, can't help but already presuppose a good deal of knowledge about the world. And in presupposing that knowledge about the world, um, philosophers are, uh, tend to like to examine the knowledge that we claim to have about the world in whatever discipline it happens to be. But particularly with regard to human inquiry, um, issues of importance to human beings and their lives. And uh, so I think it just stands to reason that having a conversation with philosophers um, helps to engage in theology precisely because theology has to know what it's embedded in, the sorts of forms of life that people are involved in and that they themselves reflect upon even if they're not yet um, ready to or willing to accept revelation and engage in theology. Theology doesn't take place in a vacuum just because it's something heard from the mouth of God, so to speak. And so we need to understand what, what's presupposed to being able to hear. Uh, what is being preached to us or what is being revealed to us. And then the reflection upon it, the systematic reflection upon it. Theology shouldn't take place in a vacuum. Well, I think what's most important in contemporary circumstances is uh, the consideration that in, in modern intellectual life, empirical science, physics, biology, chemistry, disciplines like that are considered not only the gold standard of human knowledge, but uh, by many people the only source of human knowledge. And for that reason, theology is considered as not a serious intellectual discipline. Now, one of the functions that philosophy has played historically relative to theology is to uh, demonstrate the, the rational foundations of the theological enterprise. And one of the ways in which I think it does that is by showing that natural science itself um, rests on a number of metaphysical presuppositions. And those have to do with things like uh, uh, the principle of causality, the uh, distinction between actuality and potentiality in Aristotle and St. Thomas's philosophy, uh, the principle of sufficient reason, and a number of other fundamental metaphysical, fundamental metaphysical principles. And insofar as philosophy shows, metaphysics shows, that natural science rests on those principles, it also provides a foundation for theology insofar as when you follow out the logic of those basic metaphysical principles, they provide the foundation for the classic proofs of the existence of God. They provide the foundation for the philosophical anthropology that establishes the immortality of the human soul. They establish the foundations of uh, the natural law conception of ethics. And then those things in turn set the stage. They are, as St. Thomas calls them, the preambles of faith. Uh, and they provide a foundation on which the theologian can not only rest his uh, enterprise, but also form a kind of conceptual common ground by which theology, theologians can, uh, can debate with, can discuss with uh, those who are not inclined to believe that uh, theology uh, describes any objective reality. The theologian can appeal to the philosophical arguments and show that, well, we can establish that we are describing not only something real, but something more real, more fundamental to reality than anything that natural science describes.